Hello, welcome to Ephemera Files by Tommy. And today I'm going to be working some more in the gentleman's kits from Tanya at Taddy Treasure and Nanine at Collage Type. And I started this last week and I just wanted to show you what I had done with the wallet that I made. I will link to that video below. I couldn't decide what I wanted to do with the window that was left in this wallet. And what I ended up doing was doing some embossing. Um, I don't think I have the embossing folder that I used right near me at the moment. But I embossed this thin piece of metal. And what it actually is, is the lid to a yogurt container. That's all it is, and it's very thin, very lightweight. Emboss is super easy. And then, to get those metallic colors in there that you see, I used my Tim Holtz Distress Foundry Wax, and I used a combination of Gilded, Mind, and Statue. And I really, really like how that turned out. Now all I need to do is get that put in there. And I'm going to use some of my double-sided tape in order to glue that in because glue is not going to work very well trying to get this foil from the yogurt container to stick to the paper. So there's that update. So today I want to make a I don't know, I'm going to call it an accordion document file. It probably has a proper name that I don't know the name. And just a quick tip. I don't know if you have issues like I do with organizing your parts and pieces when you're working with different digital kits and such. So I save this packaging, this cellophane packaging, whenever I order things, and I, I save a lot of it. I use some of it when I'm shipping out Etsy orders, but a lot of it I use to organize my kits so that I can keep things straight. Like in this package, I have all of the photographs so that when I want one, I don't have to go digging through all of this. Now, this one is probably the messiest part of the whole thing. It's all the labels and the watches, the typewriters, the ink wells, the tickets, the circles, all of that stuff. And that's just easier to keep in a tub so I can dig through it. But these two are just things I have pulled from other places from my stash that I think might go well with it. Uh, these are all papers and digitals, and this is actually trash to treasure for the most part. These are the larger pieces of the kit, but not large enough to be like a page. They are like this one I cut out of the paper just like that instead of fussy cutting around it so that I can make a journaling card out of it as is. Along with other things like there's a whole sheet of the stamps that I just cut out around the whole thing so that I would have it to make a journaling card. And those go into that package. I already talked about the photographs. These are the pieces that make other pieces. They make file folders, they make envelopes, they make pockets. So what I want to work on today is in this package. And this package is uh, made up of things that could be pages unto themselves. So I'm gonna turn down the volume while I open this because it's really crinkly. And not all of these are gonna be used today. The things I am going to use are the ones that are designed for a long, tall journal, I guess is how I would say it. And I want the ones that are all the same size. So I could use that one and that one. I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna make the, the tall, tall one or the not as tall, tall one. <laughs> I'm not sure that made sense. I have been fighting a headache today. Hooey! Yeah. And that doesn't make life fun. Yep. 
Yeah, and my difference between tall one and tall, tall one is like a half an inch. But if I'm going to make what I'm wanting to make, it needs to be the same size. The papers need to be the same size. I can't be going back and forth between the two. All right, and I should have, it should be exactly the same pages, just in different sizes. Yeah, there's that one. Yeah. And I think, I think I'm gonna do, do it with the bigger one. These are lighter weight and they will work better for filling the pockets and things that I am putting into my altered book. So I'm gonna put these other pieces back in the package real quick and I'll be right back. All right, so these are all the same size already. That is actually a help. I do have an issue with some of them went through the printer crooked and so I have these white edges, but I don't want to trim those off because then it's going to make it wonky. So I am going to go ahead and ink those real quick. They are all inked enough so that they don't have white showing on the edges. And all of these will need to be folded in half with the print on the outside of the fold. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to get my bone folder out so that I can make sure that those are all decent. And if like on this one, it looks like there's a white edge, even though the white edge is coming from the image on the other side, I'm going to go ahead and ink that. Now I won't have to do that on all of them just on the ones that are affected by that, which shouldn't be too many of them, I wouldn't think. All right, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these. I need to decide which one I want to be the cover, the front. Is it the cover or is it the front? What is the word that I want there? I'll figure it out. Anyway. <laughs> The way that we're going to assemble, the way that I intend to assemble this is like this. I'm just going to take each of them and slide them in to each other. And let me see if I can do that a little bit better. I've got this page like this. I'm going to take another page and I'm just gonna wrap it around that open end. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, just like that. And now I have a W. Is that a W or is that an M? That's a W. Then these two pages, I will do the same thing again. I will slide that over the open edge hard to do it this way so that the camera can see, so that you can see. 
and that one over that edge. And once again, do that <laughs> and we have dominoes see it's so much easier to do this when you can just lay them down on the table okay and then the last one goes this way so what you have is that and then on this side, you have that. You're gonna have two empty white pages right now if you are doing it this way. But we will cover that, I will cover that later. What I wanna do right now is, I want to put glue here, whoops. I don't have to put it on this side because that would be redundant. I just need to go this way to this way. At this point, you may want to decide where you want a thumb notch if you're going to put a thumb notch in. I don't know yet if I am going to put a thumb notch in. I may, I may not. So I'm just going to go ahead and get my glue. And I have Fabri-Tac in this Sugar Bell bottle. And most of the time it works really well with my arthritis. Today, it got down to 40, under 40 degrees last night. And I have been achy and sore all day. So even squeezing this bottle is a little bit hard sometimes. But if you have problems with um, arthritis, with rheumatoid arthritis or osteoarthritis or fibromyalgia or anything like that, you, you know what I'm talking about. And these sugar bell bottles are much easier to squeeze than regular goo, goo, glue bottles. And I believe that they are linked in my favorites list down below. I am not an affiliate. I just like to share the things that I find work for me with others. Forgot to put my pin in there. Now, the next thing I want to do is the same thing on this page. Now, I don't want to put glue right here right now because I don't know for sure if I want to close that all the way up or not. And you'll see what I mean here in, in a little bit. And thus, and um, I'll just confess right now, the making of this thus far has all been in my head. And right now my head hurts. <laughs> so we're just gonna see what happens. All right, and we're just gonna repeat that process to the back. All right, so when you get done with that step, you should have this. And I want you to notice 
that these centers are glued down on one side and not glued down on the other side. See what I mean? Now on this side, we want to do something, I want to do something <laughs> a little different. Let me put the pin back in my glue before it, I leave it on its side because it's easier for it to come out. What I want to do next in order to make this the kind of document holder that I'm thinking this should turn out to be. I want to get a piece of paper, and this is a cutoff, but that's probably right about the right size. If I get a piece of paper, I can probably very carefully glue down both sides, but what I'm actually going to do is take the piece of paper and place it in the middle. I'll go ahead and put glue on it and I'll place it right down the middle of that so that it's straddling both sides. And then I'm going to come back in with some washi tape or another piece of thin paper. I'm probably going to use washi tape. I'm just trying to give you options. And then I will come at it from this side and that will make this remain open across both sides there. I'm not going to use this because I probably will use it elsewhere in the journal and you won't even see any of the prettiness. Actually, if you didn't want to put anything on the top, you could go ahead and leave it like that. Just get your pouncer that has powder in it, your anti-static pouncer. That's also good for if you get a little excess glue. It's good for keeping it from uh, being sticky. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that to the other three openings and making sure that I fold it again in between so that I don't lose that uh, crease. So now we have this side, which we just glued all the backing papers onto, and this side, which is what we glued the first time. And what we have in here Except for this first one that's stuck because I over glued, <laughs> is this full size to put papers down into. Now I'm going to add some washi tape. Um, let's see, that's the part that was glued down, but I don't like the white showing. So I'm going to come back through and add washi tape here and here and then in these three places. Yep, I think I'm gonna go with I 
I'm going to go with this one. I may go with both of those, one on one side and one on the other side. straight edge on that. I may finish off two, two rolls of washi tape. And now this is where we are. Now this is one single sheet of paper. Granted, it is 24 pound and not 20 pound, but still, that's that's not a lot of uh, strength. Now blue is one of the colors that I am using in the journal. And so I've got this blue folder. It's just a two pocket folder, just plain old school type issue. And I want to enforce my cover. And this is where I'm going to have to think for a minute. I went ahead and cut my folder and the dimensions that I used were based on this particular um, piece that I've already made and it is just shy of three and a half by eight and a half not just shy of eight and a half but just shy of three and a half by eight and a half and what I want to do is I want to have this flap over here just come in tight on this first piece here. 
and it's going to look like this. It's still going to be able to be opened up. But I know that I've noticed that I've got some white showing right there. So I'm going to add just a little bit more of this washi right along here to cover up anything that's showing after I glue that on. Try to get it on there semi-straight anyway. And I don't want to hide any of this lovely paper, and that's why I am doing it this way. So I will be gluing that on there, and this is going to snug right up like that. Now I have a couple of places where my file folder, or my folder, was torn, and I have a piece that's sticking out. So I am going to first cut off the piece that's sticking out, and then I'm just going to hit it real quick. Brown works, because I've got so much brown in the rest of the journal. And that will be glued on there, but before I glue that on there, I want to measure the rest of this out. So I'm going to fold that over. And then I'm going to fold this over this end, but I'm going to leave it really, really, really loose. Really loose. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here again, leaving it really loose. You see how that is? See, I don't know if you can see how loose that is. Yeah, like that, you can tell. And this is going to be my closure, and it's going to have like a policy envelope ish closure maybe not with the circles and stuff i may put a i think i'm going to put a brad in here and just have the the string that goes around and then i'll do a marco polo knot in it and by doing it that way i still need to cover this last page so i'm going to get into let's see what kind of paper do I want to use one of my, I got a piece of washi tape stuck on there. I have this piece that I cut off of another paper. And if I glue that on there, I'm going to have to be sure and put some washi there. Let's see, what do I want to do? I could actually make that another pocket that opens on this side. Oh, I like that idea. Okay, so I'm going to cut this off real quick. I do want a thumb notch here. And just to make sure I get this lined up, 
properly. I'm going to put it over this way and then fold this over on top of it. Then I know I'm not going to end up with that awkward little crease in the middle because I've got my two pages too close together. And then this will fold over this way. Creating a little pocket like that. And again, I'm going to need to add some more of this washi. This project may be the end of this washi. We'll find out. Ooh. Yeah, and I don't have any more of that washi, so I guess I'll be switching to the other one. <laughs> it's okay, it still goes. It still looks good together. It's gonna happen with this one pretty soon. Hopefully not before this page gets down. Now, with doing that, I had a little bit of white page showing because I wasn't perfectly uh, measured on that gap, on that cut. All right, so we've got that. And now, I am going to glue this one not making a pocket, just gluing that one onto this piece. And I want to make sure that I am centered in there. I'm going to use the glue stick first, just for some quick grab. to use, let's see, I'm going to come down here on this side, and up, and down here, and that should line up just like that yes love it when a plane comes together and there we go okay I don't know that I like how that turned out I'll just wipe off a little bit of it Because it's distress oxides, I can wipe it off a little bit. I mean, the color's still there. Maybe I need to use my washi here. Is the with that cardboard still sticking on there I think I would rather not just stick the washi down without having that extra there And then I'm going to come back and do something on the inside of this, probably. But I'm also more than likely going to wait until I get closer to having the journal finished to see what I want to add in there. All right, so now this is going to fold up like this and then over. And, and remember, I didn't fold a hard fold. I just made a curved fold. 
that way if I add a whole bunch of things in there I have got room for that whole bunch of things in there all right now I want to put an eyelet in here I want to make sure that I've got it centered and this is nine inches so I want it to be on the four and a half and I want to come in Let's see. If I put my ruler on the edge of this paper, yes, that'll make it easier than trying to do it while it's trying to bounce everywhere because of all the papers underneath. I'm just going to grab a pencil up here and four and a half. Doesn't matter what color my pencil is or that it's a colored pencil. Ooh, that was an ink tense though. I might not have wanted to use that. Those are kind of expensive. <sighs> ink tense is a watercolor pencil if you don't know what it is that is um, that uses India ink. And it's like watercolor. I guess it's not a watercolor pencil. It's like watercolor, but it is permanent once it is dry. And that doesn't reach far enough, so I need to get the big bite. Let's see. There we go. Nope, nope, I need the hole. There we go. Line that up. these out again oh goodness okay I'm gonna open this really slowly because even after last week's spill I didn't go in and mark it <laughs> so um, I think I'm gonna go with the gold the dark gold here and it's marked Aren't you proud of me? <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and get this set. Why did I put the big bite away? I just said that I can't reach it. And we're setting and I need to make sure that I've got all of this set right. I have printed out a cheat sheet I guess it's actually not a cheat sheet if um, we are memory keepers we are makers actually provides it for you on which settings go together for which size um, eyelets and all of that jazz and I still forget to get it out and look at it let's see did I do that right? Nope, that's the wrong one. See, I needed to get it out. It's this one. Let's try that again. And there is no good way with this camera set up to show you how I do this. So one of these days, maybe, Wow, okay. One of these days. Maybe I will do a, a this is how I do it thing. There we go. All right, so my eyelid is set. That'll just fold in like that and over. And so now I need something to tie it with. I'm done with my glue, so I should probably put the stopper in. So let me go find what I want to use to bind this. I think this came in a kit 
or a pack of something. And I dismantled the kit because I didn't want to use it for that particular thing. And I'm thinking it should be pretty much the right length. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to feed this through that hole with the assistance of my tweezers. There's a little tiny hole. These are those reverse grip scissors and I really have a hard time <laughs> remembering to let go. And it's like that with so many things, isn't it? Learning to let go. Okie doke. So I am going to go ahead and let's see. I'm going to have to pull that way out in order to make leeway. No. I'll just take it all off the card. Instead of trying to figure out how to fit that card through there, which is ridiculous, and I don't even know why I was considering it, other than my head's not working. I'm going to go ahead and tie, I think this is just an overhand knot. And obviously, you've got a lot of string to pull through now, if you did it like I did it. And I just hit the camera, I am so sorry. Let's see. And I want that to be tighter. So I'm gonna pull that apart. Scooch it up. Just like that. And I'm going to tie a knot in that end because this is fraying big time. All right, I am just going to do this and then pull it through. And I think that I will put like a watch hand or something on the end to help feed it through those uh, layers. Because I don't want it to um, fray. I also don't want it to be too hard to get, to get closed. Or how about a key? I just got these keys not that long ago. And I think that one will work. I don't know what a safe deposit box key looks like, but I don't know that that matters, does it? But it's on this thing, which means that I'm going to have to take all the keys off to get to the key I want. Because I can't just slide it around. Let's see, that's apparently a pair. And I said this one, but do any of the others look more? I don't know, I kind of like that one, that's different. And it doesn't look quite so feminine. Yep, I do one around these two corners here. Don't ask me why, I don't know. All right. And there is that. It opens up, you just unwind. And which way's up? Yep. You unwind and 
You've got spaces for journaling and writing, and I am going to have to glue that washi down. We have a pocket here, and then you've got these spaces for journaling and writing, and I will come back and I will put the uh, notches in so that we know on this side so that we know that that this opens and you've got that space right there and this one is open with that space right there and this one is open with that space right there along with this pocket here and it all folds up and that slides down and through all right i i like the way that turned out i will come back and finish decorating it but for now this is my accordion document holder using the gentleman's kit that is available half of it in Nanine's shop at collage type half of it in tanya at taddy treasure shop i will have all of their information linked below along with the other ladies who are on the design team for this particular kit thank you for joining me today and as always be kind bye